Hi everyone, it's Raylene again. Um, and today uh, I wanted to speak about African gangs. Yeah, South Sudanese gangs, apparently. Gangs. I say that because apparently um, the South Sudanese that the government is speaking about don't really fit the conventional definition of a gang, which is an organized crime group such as bikies or mafia or whatever you want to call it. It's basically just a group of um, teenagers or adults that uh, get together through social media. Not to say that any crimes aren't, aren't being committed, but um, it seems to me that there is something to be said for the fact that the Victorian state elections are coming up in November. And there is also something to be said for what is happening in South Sudan and why Malcolm Turnbull feels the need to constantly talk and bring to our attention South Sudan and South Sudanese refugees. Um, because at the moment, well, not technically, at the moment we know, we can see in the news what's happening in South Sudan and the uh, president of South Sudan, Selva Kiya, I, I'm probably pronouncing his name incorrectly, but the president of South Sudan, which is a new country being formed as a split away from Sudan, um, in 2011, so like the world's newest, youngest country. And, um, well, anyway, the president of South Sudan has signed an agreement with the rebels and with his rival, the previous or first uh, vice president um, of, of South Sudan, and um, so it looks like we will finally have some peace in South Sudan and in the build up to their elections um, next year. So, but what I find the most interesting is what has occurred in the build up to that. And how does this involve Australia, you ask? Well, in March, of this year, the Australian government, yes, Australian government, represented by our ambassador to Sudan and Egypt, uh, what is his name, Neil, I just have to look and find his name because I don't even know who the hell he is. I know about that other ambassador, Alexander Dano. Well, it seems, oh, there it is, it's Hawkins. Hawkins, Neil Hawkins. Well, Neil Hawkins is uh, Australia's ambassador to Sudan and Egypt. And he seems to be like, he's, he's pulling a Alexander Downer for mining companies. Yeah, mining companies. So before we saw that Alexander Downer was like Woodside's bitch, now it seems like Neil Hawkins is Australian mining company's bitch. Why do I say that? Because apparently he represented the Australian government and um, basically offered Sudan, so not South Sudan, Sudan, right? Because South Sudan and Sudan are separate countries now. Um, he had offered uh, the Sudanese, not South Sudan, Sudan, Central Bank uh, to, to uh, deposit $11 billion. Yes, $11 billion into the Central Bank of Sudan. And apparently... Seven billion was going to be for the government and four for the mining industry. Uh, because apparently Australia is interested 
in Sudan's gold. Wow. Interesting, isn't it? That was in March of 2018, this year, just a few months ago. And probably when we saw this ratcheting up of African gangs in Australia. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Wow. It's amazing how politicians um, argue and uh, put forward their, uh, their schemes in the media. We just, we plebs, we just don't really know what the hell they're doing and it doesn't make sense and the statistics don't add up and we're like, what the hell? Really? African gangs are a problem? Oh my God. Yeah, but when you see what's happening in, in the continent of Africa, uh, then it makes a whole lot more sense, doesn't it? Well, anyway, so that happened in Sudan. So remember the difference. And that happened in March when Australian government, Neil Hawkins, offered $11 billion Australian taxpayer money, yep, into the bank, the central bank of Sudan. And well, what happened next? Well, in, in May, so like two months later, uh, the president of South Sudan, so South Sudan, separate to the central bank of Sudan, South Sudan, um, president uh, fired the governor or governors of the central bank of South Sudan. So what does that mean? Well, let me just tell you this one little bitsy bitsy that might have something to do with it. And that is the central bank of Sudan, South Sudan was actually a branch of the bank, the central bank of Sudan, before they broke away from um, the country of Sudan. Uh, so, yeah, that's something interesting. And that that whole country has been just an upheaval mess. And when? Since the discovery of gold. Yep. So they're all fighting, don't even know what they're fighting for, fighting for their lives, actually. But there's something more to that, and it's about their gold, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, and another thing I wanted to speak about is um, intelligence agencies and um, all this shit, all this bullshit about African gangs and this anti-association law, like apparently that's coming into play in Melbourne and that that anti-association means that like groups of Sudanese like refugees or youths, uh, they can't hang out with each other if one of them has been convicted of a crime and that could be any crime, that could be like drink driving offence. Uh, so they would be those people would be ostracized from the rest of their community to associate with any other members. And well, you know what? We've seen what um, dodgy and rogue um, central uh, uh, um, the CIA and all that have done in the world when it comes to like people and subjugating them and making them fulfill a plot that they would like, like a terror plot, like a terror plot in Australia. So like who's policing the bloody police? Who's policing the ASIO like agents and that? And how the hell do we know that like South Sudanese aren't being like targeted for that sort of crime in Australia? And enforcing these bullshit laws subjugates them further into like a little scheme. And that just goes to the rhetoric of what the hell is happening in South Sudan and Sudan and their gold and their oil. But mostly it's about their gold. Because right now when we're talking about gold, 
we have more of those pieces of paper, we have more of this speculation than there is actually gold. And we have got currencies that aren't even backed by gold. We're, we're moving to, towards worldwide currencies that are backed by commodities. Whether they are cryptic or not, or paper, whatever, but we are moving to that. And um, yeah, that's all I have. I just wanted to put it out there. I just wanted to make you think about, you know, history. History repeating itself over and fucking over again. And how intelligence companies can subjugate people. And people where they don't even know where their home is. And when you've got people like Peter Dutton making you feel like a piece of shit if you stem from another country and how you can be subjugated with like the doll and like Centrelink and all this shit and be policed when you're innocent. It like drives people to, it's like, it, it's like parenting a child. If you're always going to tell a child that they're shit and they're no good and they can't do anything and they don't have a job and you don't and you judging them by a particular trait, physical trait in particular, like the color of their skin, and you're telling them that they can't do a job. And then you just like, if you expect the worst of a child, you will get the worst of a child. And that goes for people as well. When you treat them like shit, it's like the old equation of how you subjugate people and you make them do what you want them to do. It's the oldest terror equation in the book. And all you intelligence agencies should fucking know better. So, like, yeah, come at me. I'm like, I'm used to it by now. But anyway, yeah, have a think about that. African gangs, what a load of bullshit. And like... And the Australian public should think, what the fuck is $11 billion of Australia's money going into a bank in Sudan for gold? Yeah. And who the fuck's going to benefit from that? Not us. Not the Australian taxpayer. So, yeah, think about that. And, yeah, subscribe, R squared, and I'll catch you in the next one.